Greetings people, it's Mr. Poo the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So this one is a conspiracy theory, but I just want you to pay attention to the details of the conspiracy theory because all facts come from conspiracy theories. There are so many comments that I see sometimes when people actually conclude to say there is no way that baby testimony could still be alive. There's no way this child could still be alive. Chances are they already sacrificed the child for their own rituals, for their occultic rituals. Okay, I, I am of the contrary to that uh, assertion because of this conspiracy theory. And the other thing that most of you are still trying to ponder or trying to understand is why baby testimony? Why Ruth Matthews' child? Of all the children at Mercy City, why specifically baby testimony? To those of you who have been following me long enough, when we started analyzing and bringing this issue to public attention, there was a time when there was another conspiracy theory. And this conspiracy theory was centered around Jeremiah Omoto being the biological father of baby testimony. It was a conspiracy theory. And the reason why many people were asserting to that conspiracy theory or were succumbing to that conspiracy theory is because people were trying to find the resemblance also between Jeremiah Omoto for fame and baby testimony. So many picture collages were done to say, ah, these people look alike. These people took, look alike. Please go and ask Ruth. Ruth, does she, did she have anything to do with Omoto for fame? To a point whereby we had to interview Sister Ruth Matthew again to ask her about her history or her relationship with Omoto for fame, which she gladly clarified that there was never anything between her and uh, Mr. Omoto for fame which also was begged up by Mr. Ayo when Mr. Ayo first came out to confirm that he is actually indeed the father of baby testimony. Now, this conspiracy theory, let's drive it further. To those of you who actually followed me since when, you know, when we started talking about uh, baby testimony, there is a testimonial that was given by Sister Ruth Matthew when she mentioned that the first time she went to Mercy City, Jeremiah Omoto took interest in baby testimony. Jeremiah Omoto spoke very positive things about baby testimony to say this one, people will pay to see him. Are you sure this is your child? Are you sure this baby testimony is yours? This man has power. This man is anointed as he was saying all these things to baby testimony. Point one, strike one. Strike two. The protocol of Jeremiah Omoto for fame, according to Sister Ruth Matthew, they used to allege or they used to say, oh, this boy, this boy looks like our father. This boy looks like Prophet Jeremiah Omoto for fame. This boy resembles Papa J. I, I hope you're connecting the dots as I move slowly but surely. Everyone at Mercy City who knew baby testimony would always say, ah, this child looks like Papa J. This child looks like Papa J. So now you can all imagine uh, the attention that had already surrounded baby testimony. The attention that baby testimony was already pulling towards himself. First, Omoto identified him as a blessed child, as a glorious child. Second, the people around Omoto for fame confirmed that this baby boy looks like Omoto for fame. Maybe because of the complexion or so, some other physical uh, attributes. So let's get deeper into this and try to analyze why baby testimony. Why is it that baby testimony could have been the unlucky boy to be abducted at Mercy City? Now look at it from this uh, perspective. What are the chances? These are what ifs. Let's look into Omoto Fofen himself. Does Omoto Fofen have a baby boy? Does he have a child, a boy, or all of his kids are girls? I know there was some, some rumors and there are some pictures of a child that they normally post claiming that it's Jeremiah Omoto's son. But to those who know him better, they, tell, they always tell that this child has nothing to do with Jeremiah Omoto for fame. In another conspiracy theory that I had, around the very same time when baby Testimon was abducted, there was a small function that was held at Mercy City when they were celebrating 
a, a child that was born, but no one ever saw that child. No one ever saw that child. No one ever testified to that child having been born. And no one even knows where that child is. The one that they celebrated around 2019 when baby testimony was abducted. Fast forward. What if the reason why baby testimony was taken was for a long-term plan? What if baby testimony's plan was to come in future and be presented to the public as Jeremiah Omoto's biological son who was going to take over the Mesa City Shrine? I know so many people are worried, ah, this child could not be alive. There's one thing I can tell you right now. Baby testimony is very alive and kicking. Baby testimony is well taken care of wherever he is. He's well guarded. He's preserved. For this assumed long-term plan of Omoto for fame. What if he wanted to ab adopt baby testimony as his own? Since people were already saying this child looks like a model for fame. What if? Here we are trying to explore the reasons as to why baby testimony. Why would they take baby testimony of all the kids at Mesa City? There are so many kids there. Why specifically baby testimony? With all this attention that had already been accumulated by his presence at Mesa City. Why him? So now we are looking at the reasons why it could be baby testimony. As coming to seek justice for baby testimony now, I have a belief that we are actually intercepting Jeremiah Omoto's long-term plan with baby testimony. And some will say, ah, what if you never bring the child now? What if now they can even make the child disappear? I can tell you now, they will never do anything to baby testimony. Jeremiah Omoto's fate is hinged on baby testimony being alive. Jeremiah Omoto's future is centered around baby testimony being alive. If we do not find baby testimony, there is no Jeremiah Omoto in the future. If we do not get justice for baby testimony, there is nothing called Omoto for fame in the future. If they can declare that we can't, it's declared that baby testimony will never be found, then be rest assured, Jeremiah Omoto will never exist in the future as long as we are still alive and breathing. That's my promise to the entire Mercy City and all those people that are supporting Omoto for fame. His fate is hinged on baby testimony's proof of life. Without baby testimony, there's no Omoto for fame in the future in the near future, or forever and ever. Amen. So what if they took baby testimony to groom him so that he can be the one that will take over the Mercy City Shrine? And by the time they were going to release him, since they had already alleged that they look alike, since Omoto Fofen had already said, this child has a blessing upon his life, has a light upon his life. What if he's already spotted some glory on, on baby testimony? And he wanted to make sure that he utilizes that glory for his own good and for his own benefit. Since he had already said that people will pay. If you listen to Triumph testimony and Ruth Matthew's testimony, they said it. That Omoto Fofen himself, he said, people will pay to see baby testimony. What if that glory is what attracted Jeremiah Omoto Fofen to a point whereby he became selfish to say, let me have this boy for myself. Let me deprive the mother. Let me just have him for myself so that I can benefit from whatever glory that he carries. Chances are 15 years down the line, baby testimony was going to be presented in Mercy City. And he was going to be doing like the same thing that all the other boys do in Mercy City. There are many young boys in Mercy City that are always given the microphone. He loves young boys. He recruits these boys to come and do these gimmicks in his church. What if that was the long-term plan for Omoto for Fane with baby testimony? 
to bring him at a later stage and claim that he is my son. Remember, in 2018, we celebrated about my wife having given birth. I just did not want to expose my son to the public, but here he is. Jeremiah Omoto for Fane Jr. Jeremiah Omoto Jr. Jeremy Jr. And that would be baby testimony. And most of us could have forgotten about how baby testimony looks. And that is 15 years after, 20 years after. But does he have a heir to his throne? I don't think so. Does he have a son to take over his shrine? I don't think so. This is a conspiracy theory. And the good thing about conspiracy theory, it sharpens your thinking. It makes you analyze and think further. To ask the questions, why? why did, there's no way that baby testament could have just been a coincidence. His abduction was not a coincidence. It was when in a well-orchestrated operation. The fact that two anonymous women just come, they go directly to Sister Ruth Matthew. They switch talk Ruth Matthew. They ask for directions to go and buy food of all the people in Mercy City. They ask specifically Sister Ruth Matthew. And they take the two boys to go away with them. The mother cries out, help me, help me. Mercy City does nothing about it. Omoto Fofen does absolutely nothing about it. Instead, they plant Emmanuel Marcus in Sister Ruth Matthew's life when she was demanding justice for baby testimony and reporting to the police, who later on stole Sister Ruth Matthew's phone and stole Sister Ruth Matthew's money, 70,000 Naira, which she wanted to use for media public, you know, publications to raise awareness that my child is missing. That, all that was not a coincidence. It was a well-orchestrated operation. And for them now to come and say, oh, the CCTV footages were malfunctioning. Only the two CCTV footages, one which covers the entrance, one which covers the children's department, only those two were malfunctioning of all the CCTV cameras. Just those two were malfunctioning. At that particular day, on the 15th of April, 2019. Do you see how this whole thing was planned and orchestrated? And you can tell me it was a coincidence. These were just strange women. That get into that got into Mercy City. And they can't produce those CCTV footages because they know that the CCTV footages will expose them. So the abduction of baby testimony was not an accident. It was a well-planned operation. And the reason why they took baby testimony, it was not for baby sacrificing or for ritual sacrificing. It's because they probably the man himself, the kingpin. Omoto for Fed had a long-term plan for the young man. Now that we've made this case public, now that everyone knows about baby testimony, we have just interrupted or intercepted the plan, the long-term plan of using baby testimony in future. What do you think about this one? Does it add up? Does it make sense? Because I'm of the highest belief that it was not a coincidence that baby testimony was abducted or baby testimony was targeted. These might be some of the reasons why they took him. And I can assure you, baby testimony is alive. And Papa Jerry also confirmed it, that baby testimony is alive. So to those of you who are still thinking about ritualistic sacrifices, please dislodge that mindset. Dislodge that thinking from your belief, from your subconscious. Baby's te testimony is alive. Omoto Fofen confirmed it himself when he made that four-day prophecy that what if this baby that is missing comes out? What if we we'll always hold Jeremiah Omoto, put him in the corner because of that prophecy that he gave, which was a confession, to say, what if this baby comes out? What will you do? What if this missing baby comes out? What will you do? That alone says it all, that the baby is indeed missing. In all their damage control, what they have not realized or what they did not realize is they have just confirmed what, you know, and answered so many questions that were in people's minds to say, did this baby really go missing? In all their damage control, they've proven it that the baby actually went missing at Mercy City. For them to come and say Ruth Matthew sold the child at Mercy City, it's a confirmation that the baby went missing at Mercy City. So there's no way Mercy City and Jeremiah Omoto can ever 
no matter the outcome or no matter uh, how they will release baby testimony, can be distanced from this abduction syndicate. They will forever be held liable for this case, for the damages and loss that occurred to Sister Ruth Matthew. They will forever be liable, whether they like it or not, because they are obligated to the duty of care. And if they do not have enough uh, instruments around their institution to prevent such losses from happening to people that come to their shrine, then legally they are liable. So with that being said, I'll check you out on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger. I'm out. <laughs>